day two. Uh, so this talk is by Lario Filippini uh, from Politecnico di Milano in Italy and he's going to speak about energy efficiency in mobile network. It's kind of a tutorial level course on how to apply this concept in, in mobile network. So the floor okay. is good. Okay. Thank you, Paolo, for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me? I, I know that I have a loud voice, but is it okay? Okay. And, um, okay. Why I'm here? Because, okay, of course, because Paolo invited me, but uh, yeah, I think that the real proposal uh, is that uh, Politecnico Milano was involved as IMEC in uh, the Green Touch Consortium, which, is, which was a worldwide consortium industrial and uh, academic partners that uh, had the ambition and the goal of designing what will be the, net, the future network that uh, can have uh, 1,000 improvement of energy efficiency. And that's why I'm here and see most of the material in this talk will be, is, is taken from that uh, project. Uh, what, we, what are we talking about uh, today? Basically, the, the talk is divided in two parts. The first one, we will talk about uh, energy efficiency. So, what is it? How we can measure it? Um, so why we are interested in it? But, uh, we are in, I know that you are interested in it. And the second part of the course is about uh, green wireless networking. So, what we uh, can do to our network to make it more energy efficient. So there are the many families of possible uh, actions and we go through them very easily. So let's start from the beginning. So why are we interested in energy efficiency? Okay, uh, there are, uh, there are let's say, many causes. Uh, the first one is because it's the top of the school, so since we are here, you must be interested in it. Uh, the second answer is that we are engineering, uh, so uh, whenever we see something that uh, works, that operates, uh, what we want to do is to make it more efficient than possible because we say we are engineering. And other, another answer to this question is that energy production always means pollution. And uh, the problem is that here is that we, we maybe, usually we are concerned about the health of our planet, at least some of us. And the, another answer to this uh, question would be because having energy means having energy bills and of course having bills means money. And the last one is you may be interested in energy efficiency because we know that networks are evolving and the, if you don't take care about it, we may have problems. So the real answer uh, it's a mix of them, of course it's a kind of a uh, subjective thing, uh, but I believe that in order to be, let's say, sure while we are talking about the energy efficiency, we need to understand how the networks are evolving in the next future. So, um, since the networks are basically wireless networks are characterized by the traffic they have to carry on, um, what will be the traffic in the near future? So this is, uh, I think that you may have seen somewhere these kind of pictures uh, because they are very famous, they come from the Cisco, uh, the virtual network index and they actually explain us uh, how, how the traffic will evolve in the near future. So we have three main directions. The first one is the it's a traffic growth direction and as you can see in the the next five years, we will have uh, five times as much traffic that we have today. And the traffic will be, the potential volume uh, will be mainly generated by smartphones, okay? And with the other two, let's say, small players that are basically able to them and uh, uh, tablets, basically. Okay, then we have uh, the same thing say what we have in the future in terms of connected devices the devices. and we will see that uh, the connected devices in the near future will increase not so much as the traffic does 
And what, is we, what we see is the change in terms of big players. Nowadays, big players are basically smartphones and non-smartphones things. Why in the future, uh, let's say this, uh, this slice, let me see, <coughs> this slice, this slice will be growing a lot, which is the slice of uh, M2M communication. As we can see, there will be a lot of devices, but the one they generate if the uh, last step of the evolution is this one, this is the type of traffic that will be left, the traffic mix that we have in the future. And here we can see that uh, uh, what is going to take the big part is mobile video that will be, that nowadays is a big fraction of this, is going to be even bigger in the future. Uh, I don't know if you can read this. Nowadays we have 60% of mobile video and in the future we will be some 78% of volume generated. So it also means that since we have traf video traffic, it also means that the network will be less and less asymmetric. Uh, since uh, if you think about uh, videos, uh, for instance, uh, Periscope, uh, for instance, uh, Facebook Live, uh, so you have, let's say, uplink and downlink that are going to be less asymmetric. So that's the picture of what we have in the traffic. And of course, uh, the network in the future must react to this traffic evolution and the actions that operators are going to uh, apply are of these three types. Of course, what they, what they want to do is to improve the expanded efficiency of the network. Uh, if, you, uh, if you consider these figures, uh, you have that in GSM, so in the Second generation, the efficiency was 0.05 bit per second per hertz, uh, while in the LTA technology we have 5 bit per second per hertz. That's one direction. One direction. The other direction is uh, exploiting new spectrum bands. So we are, as I mean, as the pioneers did with the, uh, let's say, the far west, we are doing the same with the spectrum. So actually we are going upwards in frequency and we are trying to let's say, exploit uh, uh, frequency bands that we believe that cannot be done in the, in the past. So we are going to move to our meters, to meter with uh, solutions. And the third types of action is extension of the network architecture. So since we need more capacity, we need to provide more capacity, we actually need uh, to provide, to deploy more devices, more stations. Okay. However, there is a there is a problem. All three, all these three types of solutions uh, mean high energy consumption because high spectrum efficiencies, as we will see in the next couple of slides, means higher uh, power consumption. Higher frequencies means higher alternation, so it means higher transmitted power, so it means less energy efficient, so higher energy consumption. And of course, it's starting more base, more base stations, it means we have to supply energy to all these stations, so it means that we have to spend more in the energy. So, uh, in the future we have, if you don't do anything, we will have much higher energy consumption. Uh, why energy consumption is a concern for us? Uh, actually, uh, there are two the main uh, concerns. The one is the carbon footprint. Uh, here the point is that uh, in the past years we were used to see ICT technologies as a way to reduce uh, the carbon footprint of other sectors. So it, it was helpful for us. But now we are realizing that uh, the mean that you use to reduce energy in another sector uh, doesn't produce a non negligible amount of uh, energy consumption. So we have to take care about it. And there are some numbers I put here, let's uh, say some references to it, that you can cite if you want to use these numbers. Um, basically, I mean, uh, the actual number is. It's not precise, but it's just to give you an idea of what, how much energy we're putting 
about, and what we are talking about is uh, some 2% of the total greenhouse gases emission, uh, which are related to the ice. Uh, the other concern uh, is the electricity bill. Uh, the, the, the reality is that, for instance, in this study, in five years, uh, the energy consumption of energy uh, of combustion batteries uh, went from 200 terawatt in 2007 to 335 terawatt. So it's about 1.5 percent of the total energy on uh, the total electricity consumption in the world. Uh, why we are interested in it? Because uh, of course we have to spend money to pay electricity bill. Uh, the problem here is that uh, the radio access network is one of the most energy hungry parts <coughs> of networks. Uh, you can estimate that uh, uh, this, um, say this part of the network consumes more than 80% of the total energy consumption of the uh, radio access network. Uh, of the access network, sorry. And of course, the, the, the other problem is that uh, uh, in addition to paying money to for electricity bills, you have to pay money to buy additional devices to extend our networks. So that's my concern. And uh, what else? Uh, basically, these two economical and uh, let's say environmental drivers uh, basically motivated the. the the, the originated the, a lot of studies on this problem and basically all these studies are summarized by the key term green wireless networking. Um, if you do the exercise to introduce uh, let's say green wireless in Google Scholar uh, search engine you have uh, something like 800 850,000, uh, let's say, results. So it's kind of a big uh, set of works. And uh, of course, these uh, activities are uh, different in terms of actions, in terms of uh, uh, what they do. And if you want to have a kind of uh, comprehensive definition of it, uh, uh, you can say that green wireless networking is is this one. So developing David devices, design protocols, proposing network planning and optimization strategies that include the energy efficiency in every aspect, uh, energy, uh, sorry, energy efficiency aspect in every uh, say, daily network activities. So that's a kind of big uh, definition of it. And uh, if you want to be honest, this is also a lucky case because uh, it's one of the few cases where the money uh, drives the world to a kind of better world. And saving money drives the world to a better world because um, what we have is that, uh, of course, if you reduce the, the electricity bill, you have that uh, the operators can see immediately that uh, they spend uh, less money. And this is kind of immediate and direct effect on their budget. And this is nice because it has a byproduct, which is the greater uh, impact on, on, on the world's health. So it is kind of a good byproduct that we have to save money. In some other sectors, it's not. The same because, I mean, uh, sometimes saving money, uh, let's say, in the immediate future uh, does give you, uh, let's say, a uh, higher pollution amount, or sometimes uh, the money saving is not so immediate, so you, it's difficult to convince people to invest in your. So, okay, that's the big picture. Uh, around the efficiency, but the two fundamental <coughs> questions are what's the energy efficiency and how, since we are engineers, how do we measure it? So, 
let's talk about energy efficiency. Um, basically, there are uh, well, this is several widely accepted definitions, and let's um, say one of the most uh, say widely accepted is uh, the energy efficiency can is the amount of energy required to distribute the bit. Kind of general definition. They say uh, an opposite perspective on the problem is the number of bits transmitted in the unit of energy. Uh, of course, I didn't really mention it, but if you have questions, you are feel free to raise your hand and uh, give it anyway. A anyway, sorry. Okay, this uh, definition uh, actually brings us to express our energy efficiency in different, uh, uh, let's say, the units of measurement, and uh, you know, the most used one are java per bit, or what's uh, over bit per second, which is basically the same thing. However, this is a very general definition, so because we, talk, we, we, we talked about bits, but which bits? So, let's say information on bits, of red bits, uh, what you consider everything, just useful bits, it depends on what you measure. The other uh, question is, uh, where are these bits transmitted? So you consider, uh, let's say, radiated bits, or let's say, beyond the antennas, or you consider the bits that are coming from the Macaulay, or you consider the bits that you transmit in the circuits of the devices, there are many points where you can transmit bits. Of course, uh, considering one thing on the other, uh, of course, may make some changes on the final result. And uh, the final question, which is, in my opinion, the most critical one, is which power are you considering? So, uh, radiated power, the power of the suppliers, the circuit power, the air conditioning power because some types of stations need uh, needs a kind of a cooling system in order to not have everything screwed up. So you have made several alternatives. And of course what you to be care to, to, I mean what you have to focus on every every time you talk about energy efficiency is to be precise is in it to be precise, he indicated so which bit, which power, and where they make this bit sound. Uh, for instance, if you consider the energy consumption, so the power that you have to consider, I mean, this is a let's say, high level scheme of, uh, let's say, the power consumption in uh, uh, the station, and, that, and here you can see that uh, you have many points where you can measure your power. You can have the power, so the only antenna. You can, you can have the antenna power, so what you have say, before the antenna transmissions. Uh, then you can have the output power of the power amplifier, so before the feeders. Or you can consider the power you have to, uh, let's say, feed into the power amplifier or you, have to, you can consider the, ba the baseband processing power, or you can consider the power that you have to provide before the cooling system, or you have to consider the overall side power. So there are many options. And of course, as you may know, uh, depending on the result you want to show, you consider the right <laughs> measuring point, uh, usually in both sides. So pay attention on which power uh, this I mean, the energy efficiency result you see uh, considers. Okay. Next step is um, okay. We have more or less clear idea idea on what energy efficiency is. Then what we want, what we want to do is okay. Give me a system. And now I want to characterize the energy efficiency of the system you are providing to me. And uh, even there, you, you, you may have different 
perspectives on how you can characterize your device, your system, and its efficiency. And uh, basically, you can consider metrics at different abstraction level. You can have uh, energy efficiency characterization at the component level. So you want to uh, here, if you focus on these metrics, you want to uh, investigate on the energy efficiency of antennas, power amplifiers, power suppliers, so let's say hardware in your system, other pieces of hardware in your system. <coughs> the second step, which is let's say the next higher, higher level, is characterizing the energy efficiency of the, at the equipment level. Uh, device level, so it means you are interested in characterizing the energy efficiency of, I don't know, base uh, station in terms of network device, or you are, you are interested in characterizing the energy efficiency of a smartphone and mobile, and mobile terminals and so on and so forth. Going, let's say, upper, you have that you can characterize the energy efficiency of the overall network. So you consider the energy efficiency of the entire network according, this is important, to the specific, the specific performance that the operators, the who runs the network, uh, requires to the network. Because according to different coverages, capacities, delays, you may have different energy efficiency. I mean, it depends on uh, as the car, that, let's say the um, the, the, the oil consumption depends on how you drive your car. If you are, let's say, like a, let's say, a former driver, or if you are like your granny, it depends very much on that. Uh, of course, uh, what plays the main role in uh, determining what you pay in your energy bill, if you are the operator of the network, is the overall network level. So, in the rest of the talk, I will focus on it, okay? Uh, however, the point is that uh, this high-level definition of energy efficiency characterization uh, is, it, may, it may be a problem because it depends of, on several aspects in your network. So, you have to be careful of how you play your network when you measure your energy efficiency. And sometimes it's so difficult that uh, even deciding what to measure may be a problem. Uh, I'll give you an example in the next slide. So, what we have is that uh, characterizing the energy efficiency of a mobile network is a difficult task. Uh, because there are many aspects that, plays, uh, that play a role in the energy efficiency, of course, uh, that is the fundamental contributions are given by the energy efficiency of the components that you use to build your network, but also other aspects, for instance, traffic distributions in your mobile network uh, determine the load point of each base station. And you may have that different base station at different load points and different energy efficiency. Or another thing that is important is the type of network type of the network because, uh, for instance, you may have that in different areas of your mobile network, uh, you decide to have uh, different deployment, and so having different deployment causes, causes different energy efficiency. And last thing is the propagation scenario. If you want to run your network in a, with a frequency or a scenario where the propagation is hard, uh, because the donation is high, you have to inject more power, so we consume more. And many, many other things that you have to take into account when you measure it. And what I was mentioning is that even if you decide what to measure is a problem, for instance, okay, we know that, uh, okay, we can measure the energy efficiency as what over bit per second, but which, bit per se which value of bit per second do you want to use? Uh, one idea could be, okay, we know the, the power consumption of our device, of our transmission, I think. And we know that uh, this uh, technique can uh, provide us nominal capacity of uh, CB per second, so the energy efficiency is uh, worth over 
nominal capacity of your device. However, it means that if you are measuring this energy efficiency, it means that you are considering that your device is always transmitting at the highest rate possible. But if you consider what happens in the mobile network, it's rarely the case uh, because of two reasons. One reason is that uh, during the day and during the week, during the months, we have traffic variation. You have higher transmission rate in the daytime and, of course, lower transmission rate, lower speed in the nighttime. So, the energy efficiency varies during the day. Let me finish and then I give you a question. The other point is uh, that uh, when you, let's say, when you deploy a network, and you have to dimension, dimension the capacity of the network, um, the capacity you provide is much higher than the traffic that you can see. Because you, what the operator, operators do is to over provision the network in order to react to, uh, let's say, uh, unexpected traffic peaks or to, uh, let's say, to be proof, future proof, so when the traffic is. That's a question. According to what is written there, if I increase the bit per second, okay. and I uh, to keep fixed the, the amount of energy, the energy efficiency is decreasing because it's both divided per second. Uh, it depends on how you measure the energy efficiency. If you measure the number of bits you can transmit per power per, per let's say energy unit, okay, you have prefer to transmit more bits per energy unit. If you measure the energy efficiency in the energy you need to transmit a bit, of course you prefer to have uh, uh, let's say, uh, let's say less value, less energy amount to transmit the same unit. I mean there are two opposite directions that you can see it's in a different way. So this is the energy per bit version. So you want to Decrease the energy you need to transmit a bit. We usually pay, let's say, with these two, uh, let's say, count, uh, uh, opposite perspectives. So you, you see, you see both of them in the literature. Yeah. So that's why I'm presenting both. Yeah, we know the energy. Yeah, it depends on. Uh, see that uh, what we define energy efficiency is a kind of a big cloud that we have. To be precise, but yeah, we are right. I should have be more precise <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay. And okay, that that's uh, was what I was telling is that okay, uh, pay attention on the capacity that on the bit rate you consider when you measure the efficiency. Okay, so now we know that uh, considering normal capacity probably is not the best way of measuring the energy efficiency, so, okay, let's move to the, let's say, opposite perspective and say, okay, uh, I don't care about uh, this is not my capacity, but I know that uh, I want to cover a given area, so provide full coverage, because that's one of the requirements of my networks, and so I have to install a given amount of base stations, and these base stations consume a given power value and so what I have to measure is the both over square meter because they depend on depend on how many distribution is stored. The problem is that if you focus just on the coverage, uh, it's okay for rural areas, but we are missing what happens in the urban area where the, the coverage is not the driver of network deployment because in the urban area you put many additional uh, base stations in order to provide other capacity. So, okay, even there, what you measure, what you define as efficiency, is uh, kind of something that we have to be careful when you talk about it. So, what we have to do in the end? We have to consider these things whenever we talk about energy efficiency. So, if you want to correctly measure the energy efficiency of one network, you have to, they say, you investigate over these six points. First, you have to consider that uh, 
in different areas of your network, you may have different layouts. And uh, you have to apply the right layout to the right type of layout. First thing. Second thing is that in different areas, even if you may have this similar layout, you may have different configuration sets for different areas because you may have different parameters to set optimal. Another thing that you have to take care about, take care of is propagation conditions. So for every area you want to run your network, you have to investigate what the propagation conditions are. Because they are important in order to find rates, coverage. Another thing that is very, 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 and very important is the traffic models. Because in different areas you have the, the traffic, the user distribution may vary in time and space. So you have to consider it and be very careful about it. I remember that, uh, in, let's say, for instance, in the Green Touch project, we spent many, many days in the agreement in which the correct traffic distributions are in different types of uh, area, areas where you run your network. So it's very, it's a very important. Thing. Another thing that you need is a correct power model for the devices that are involved in your network. So this is kind of fundamental. And the last but not the least is you have to take care about the operator target. So running a network uh, with a, a target, a quality of service target, may give you a different efficiency if you change your target in terms of true, minimum throughput guarantee to the user, minimum delay that you want to provide, given, uh, uh, let's, say, uh, uh, let's say, percentage of coverage that you want to guarantee in your areas. So, these seven types of aspects must be very, very careful in this thing. However, the problem is that uh, we may think that in order to investigate the energy efficiency of a network, we have to consider the world network, the whole network. So it would be impossible. If it was like this, considering everything in your network is impossible. It will provide you a model, let's say, a system which is impossible to invest in. However, on the, let's say, looking further in these um, specifications, it seems that we can characterize our network per area. And this is, let's say, a good way to go. And this is what we usually do in big projects. So what we do is, okay, we have the network, we have different areas where the network is run, and then we take a snapshot in each of these areas, okay, and we fully characterize this snapshot, we compute the energy efficiency in this snapshot, and then we average out the energy efficiency we have obtained according to the weight each specific area has in the Full, uh, full network. Uh, here, the key, upset, the, the, the key upset, uh, aspects are two. First one is okay, we need a little more effort to characterize each specific area. So we, we, we have to spend time in the full characterization of the area that we are, for, uh, we are facing, basically. And the other thing is that uh, if you want to be fair, if you want to be fair in terms of energy efficiency results, we also have to evaluate to investigate on which is the best layout, best network configuration in terms of energy efficiency that you may, we may want to deploy in that specific. So the characterization, the, the, the good characterization of the energy efficiency of a network is kind of uh, not so trivial. We have to consider many things. OK, 
Okay, so craft question, this is basically the end of the first part of, of talking about energy efficiency. No question? Okay, so what we have next is green wireless network. So, uh, we will see now, okay, at higher level because uh, we may talk about we may talk about energy efficiency for weeks, okay, because you have many aspects, phase, many trade-off. But uh, I want to just give you a guideline, a, a big map, a big map of what happens in the energy efficiency world, and uh, so you can have your pointers. I put a lot of references in the slides, so you can have, you have, uh, you have the opportunity to go uh, deeper in what I need to say now. So, uh, green wireless networking. The networking. Um, basically, uh, what has been done in the literature and also in the the manufacturing of uh, the green devices, green wireless devices, can be classified in these three main tracks. So the first track is improving radio access nodes, so making them more energy, energy efficiency. The second uh, big uh, group of solutions is the so are the solutions where you want to improve the deployment of the network. You want to deploy the network which is more energy efficient, more, more, more energy efficient, just in terms of how you put your base stations. And the third track of energy efficiency energy efficient activities are those related to the network management. Because even if you have a good uh, let's say radio access node. If you have good uh, network deployment, how you operate your network, how you manage your node, can do a lot of difference in terms of the energy efficiency that you have in the end. So we, we have to take care about it. So, of course, as I told you, uh, having a profile energy consumption profile is kind of a fundamental stone, a kind of a pillar of everything related to the green the wireless network because actually it defines uh, what you can do and what you can, but more important, it breaks the trade-off because what you have in the end is that you are not so lucky so that everything is linear. So not important how you scale it. In the end, things are not linear, and when you scale it, we have to be careful uh, because we have effects that depend on the point you are working at. So having a, a good power model and having uh, the correct input parameters in a power model is very, very important because it defines the, the, your action, your best actions you can do and also the final energy efficiency design. Uh, of course I don't go through it because Claude did it and uh, I know that IMEC are uh, experts, the world, one of the worldwide experts on making models about energy consumption. They also have been involved in the Green Touch uh, project that they provide us a, a very good model that we use basically on the whole project. And it's also nice to have these kind of models because they are kind of uh, points points to refer to refer to if you want to uh, defend your approach. So if your approach depends on the power model that you have on your system, having a good, uh, uh, let's say, a famous. Uh, uh, point to refer the readers is always a nice thing to have. Okay. Okay, let's see there. 
let's start from oh, sorry. let's start from the beginning. So we want to improve the radio access uh, and its efficiency. Here yeah, basically uh, things that you want to be more energy, energy efficient in your uh, transmitting devices and basically you have two main directions. You have the possibility to improve the hardware of your transmitting devices so for instance uh, this motivated uh, the, the study of new types of new types of power amplifiers so with more uh, energy efficiency features uh, however here the, 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 I believe that the key point is uh, to have a flexible hardware so if you have an hardware where you can deactivate branches that are not used at the moment so if you succeed in having this kind of hardware okay, that will be the nice, nicest thing you can have for energy efficiency purposes of course another approach is to have more efficient Units, so because you not only need to transmit things but also you need to process data uh, so if you have efficient efficient way of processing your data okay, we, we, we will be that. that's one branch the other branch is uh, working on transmission technologies so provided that uh, what you can do with the hard parts of your network is let's say as best as possible uh, now you turn your uh, you focus on uh, on, the speed, uh, on, on things that you do at transmission level basically here the, 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 the approaches you can have are uh, on two parts so one thing you can do is spending less power uh, on unused wire resources for instance if you know that uh, this subcarrier is let's say, penalized by the propagation environment, uh, you may not want to use it. So you remove, you remove sending power on this particular subcarrier. Or, for instance, if you have a uh, uh, TDNA approach, uh, if you realize that in one time slot you will have a lot of power interference, so the, the, the rates you can have in, in, in those time slots. Uh, Times loss are very low, you may save energy, prevent from transmitting, prevent from transmitting that stock. So this kind of approaches. Um, other type, the other type of solutions that you can have is to okay, I don't want I don't want to change the power in the band in the bandwidth of the system, but I want to transmit more bits. Okay, so I can increase the energy. Uh, however, I will show you in a, in a couple of slides that there are some intrinsic trade-offs that you have to take care uh, when you, let's say, resort to these solutions. And these trade-offs are the bandwidth versus power trade-off, the delay versus power trade-off, and the spectrum efficiency, putting everything together, is the spectrum efficiency versus energy efficiency trade-off. Of course, I mean, I'm not a physical air man, but I'm a working boy, okay? So I don't go into details. Uh, there are, let's say, people that are more qualified than me going into these details, but I just want to provide you uh, an overview of what you can do and what are the, let's say, difficult parts when you play with this improved radio access. Okay. Um, so, first, first, first step. The first step is the following: uh, bandwidth less power, less power. Of course, you know better than me that uh, when you consider a transmission system, you have bandwidth and power, which are two very important resources that usually are limited. You have to consider a given bandwidth, maximum bandwidth, you have maximum transmission power, okay. And what you are interested in the end is the rate you can achieve. Of course, everybody knows the Shannon capacity formula, as, and if you play a little bit with it, uh, you obtain this uh, dependence, okay. 
Well, the power is a function of the bandwidth. Uh, ah, sorry, I put bandwidth W, uh, but it was intended to be. So the power is a function of the bandwidth W. And uh, if you play a little bit with uh, the asymptotic behavior of this equation, you have that uh, if you have infinite bandwidth, uh, you can achieve your rate, which is a target, with uh, a power which is as low as, uh, as, low as uh, n0 times n times meter and bubble up to. But of course, it happens when you have no bandwidth. Uh, however, the, 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 the rationale of this uh, trade-off is that, okay, if you want to achieve this rate, that rate and uh, you want to save power, so be more energy efficient, see, energy efficient what you can do is to increase, to, 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 to increase your bandwidth, so you, you use the same power over, let's say, the, the, sorry, using the same rate over a given uh, a large bandwidth, so you want However, this is what you have in theoretically, ideally, when you just consider the, the radiating power, so the power that uh, the uh, Shannon's capacity law considers. Um, however, what we have in real systems is that, oh, of course, it depends on the power, on the, the, the power you consider, as I showed you in the, in the previous game. If you just consider the radiating power, that's nice, you have this curve. But since you don't pay your bill according to the radiating power, but to, let's say, other types of power, if you consider in this trade-off uh, the circuit energy instead of the radiating power, uh, it turns out that uh, if you want to use a larger bandwidth, you have to spend more in your circuitry. And so it means that if you want to use larger bandwidth, the circuit power you need increases. So in the end, if you increase too much your bandwidth, it, it is true that you decrease the radiative power, but you increase the circuit power. At some point, the circuit power is much higher than the radiative power. So we have a kind of minimum. So this, is, this part is driven by the the power and this is part is given is driven by the circuit power. So pay attention on, on, on what happens in the real system. And that's a first trade-off. So a first handles you can play with. A second type of uh, trade-off is the following. It's the trade-off you have uh, between delay and power. Um, with respect to the previous uh, relation, here we have something which is more complicated to analyze because it's not so trivial, so you don't have everything in, in the equation, but we have many things, for instance. Of course, the delay that you experience in uh, receiving your bits uh, depends on the rate at which you transmit your bits. <coughs> Sorry. But it's not only given by that, you also have to consider how, how much time you need to process your packet, how much, how, how long your packet is, period time. So you have many sources of delay in your systems. So basically what we have is that uh, the delay in the end is not only given by the transmission time, but also by the scaling approach you want to use and uh, the resource allocation that you, let's say, uh, well, that you use to drive your network. However, if you want to be at the highest level possible, you can have kind of a brutal simplification, kind of very early simplification, saying that uh, the delay uh, bit experiences uh, is the inverse of the rate it is meaning. So basically, we are throwing out, throwing away everything, so they are just transmitting the popular transmission time. And again, if you put this substitution in the Shannon's capacity equation, you have this uh, second uh, uh, relation. And again, you have that uh, uh, if you increase your uh, admissible delay, 
uh, you can reduce sorry, you can reduce the power that you use. And uh, here the rational is if I don't have time limits, okay, uh, what I can do is uh, okay, I just switch on switch off my devices and just wait uh, much time in order to find uh, the best, for instance, propagation conditions. And when I find them, okay, I can deliver my path. So if you wait a lot, you, you may have better opportunities to transmit your data. And that's more or less the reason of this, um, of this decay. Uh, if you want to be more precise, I put your reference where you can find uh, the three more serious analysis of this trade-off. And basically here what they, they show is that if you use a lazy scheduler with the guaranteed maximum delay of each bit, uh, you can have this trade-off. However, this is again something which is ideal. Because if you just consider the radiating power, what you have in the end is that uh, if you switch off your transmission, this transmitting device, uh, you basically have zero radiating power. And so you can wait as much as you want because you have to zero in terms of radiating power. However, if you consider again the zero power, even if you switch off the radiation power, you still have uh, an offset in terms of energy consumption that is given by the fact that you keep the device on. So we have this flat energy consumption and when you wait a lot, uh, this energy consumption that you spend in the idle state becomes a main source of energy consumption. And that's why when you wait a lot, then you spend power. That's why you have this meaning. Again, ideally you can wait as long as you want, but in practice we have to take care of that. Uh, you can see the fact that uh, you have kind of baseline power consumption that you cannot uh, switch off. Basically. If, if you don't want to switch off the device, but if you switch off the device, then you lose that. That's another trade-off. Okay. Then, since you are now expert of the, of the game, let's go to the, the first, uh, the, the final and let's say more important trade-off, which is spectrum efficiency versus accuracy efficiency trade-off. Uh, here the point uh, is important because if you look at, if you look back and you see what happened in the, let's say, subsequent uh, cellular network technologies, as I mentioned, you, you, you see that uh, from one technology to the other, what the engineers were interested in was to improve the spectrum diffusions. Because our spectrum is a scarce source, uh, we pay a lot in every, every earth in our spectrum band, so we want to squeeze out from it everything we can. So, that's Let's, pro let's design our system in order to have uh, as much as possible out of it. The problem is that uh, what they did in the past is to ignore the fact that uh, if you, I mean, what they did is to ignore the power consumption. So we want we wanted to increase the number of bits per earth, bit per second per earth, and that's it. That's our goal. However, in the last years, they started to realize that if you do like this, you miss a very important trade-off, which is that uh, if you increase the spectrum efficiency, you decrease the energy efficiency of your system. So, okay, let's squeeze as much as possible out from the spectrum, but we have to take care of it. We have to pay attention to um, the energy efficient stuff. In order to give you a rough idea of what happens, I use the game, the shared capacity uh, 
formula and uh, what you can drive is the following. The spectrum efficiency of the transmission system is given by, okay, uh, basically from the uh, Shannon capacity formula, you divide this formula uh, by the bandwidth. Okay, so what you have is just log it. And here the spectrum efficiency, the spectrum efficiency of, of course it depends on the power, the bandwidth and the noise level, and this is measured in bit per second per earth, kind of usual stuff. Uh, why if you measure the, the energy efficiency now in terms of bit per joule, okay, you have okay, the strength of capacity over the power, so it's a bit per second over what, and so it's a bit per job. And you, if you combine the two, you have this equation. The number of bits you can transmit per joule is a function, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the, the number of bits you can transmit per, uh, per joule is a function of the spectral efficiency of your system. It means that uh, if you have uh, zero spectral efficiency, okay, you have that uh, the energy efficiency converges to this number. But more important, if you have this spectral efficiency that goes to infinity, what you have is that your energy efficiency converges to zero. It means that if you use infinite spectral efficiency, you, you lead your system to a point where for each joule you can transmit no bit. So it's useless basically. Of course, the best way of saving energy is not transmit anything, but it's not possible. I mean, if you, divide, if, if you buy a system, you want to use it. Okay, okay, the best way is not to use it at all, but since you buy it, you want to use it. Okay, so again, uh, you don't look surprised. What we have in reality is this kind of K with the energy efficiency of, and spectral efficiency. Uh, we, we, are, we are talking about energy efficiency, okay, bit per joule. And what you have in reality uh, is that if you consider everything in the end, uh, uh, you have this belly shape curve. Uh, what's the reason? Uh, the reason is the following. Uh, again, if you consider circuit energy, uh, you have a kind of constant power level that you cannot avoid unless you switch off your device. And uh, what happens when you move in this direction is if you are decreasing spectral efficiency, it means that for a given unit of bandwidth, you are transmitting, let's see, uh, fewer, fewer bits per second. Okay. Uh, if you move left, uh, you, you reach a point where for a given amount of bandwidth, you are transmitting a very low rate. So it means that uh, Now the energy that you spend to transmit each bit is mainly driven by the circuit energy. Because now when you go left from this highest point, what you have is that your bits per second are so few that their heating power is very, very low. Okay? So it means that what you uh, the big part, the main part of your energy consumption is driven by the circuit effect. And of course, if you go even less, uh, you, you are reducing the bit rate even more, while the constant power that you need to supply to your system is, is fixed, and so you have a fixed power consumption and you are reducing the bit per second the bits per second and so that's why you have a decrease in the energy efficiency. So because you spend the same amount of energy and you transmit much fewer bits per second. Okay? That's 
That, that's the idea. Of course, uh, the, 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 the shape of, the, of this curve is kind of uh, orating over different parameters that you consider in your transmission system. And uh, they are basically driven by the modulation schemes you want to use, the coding schemes that you want to use, and also uh, from the distance between the transmitter and the receivers because, of course, uh, the closer the user is to, you, to the, the, the receiver is to the transmitter, the higher the modulation should be in order to be in to in order to be in energy efficiency because we want to store this spectrum of And of course here you have a reference to uh, the uh, better analysis on what I'm talking about. Okay, these are the three main trade-offs that you have to consider in the radio as part of your network. Let's have some completing comments and then we'll be able to see if everything is at the right place. Um, Okay. Uh, first point to notice is that these curves have a minimum, uh, let's say optimum point. So it means that if we know this curve in, in, in advance, we can design our system to work at the best point possible in terms of energy efficiency. So they are useful to design our system. Second point is that uh, they consider, let's say, in the best case, the circuit power. The point is that in the circuit power is not the wood power that we consume in our network. We have, we have other sources of power that probably provide, let's say, provide a higher contribution than the circuit power. So, okay. They are nice, but be careful when you use them. The third important point is the following. The formulas that I showed you just consider a link, but we are talking about network. Can you understand what we have found over a link to the entire network? The answer is it depends. Because you have that uh, the, the impact of the network over this formula depends on some deployment and network operating characteristics, for instance. Uh, when you consider multiple cells, you have the intercell interference. And when you consider the intercell interference, uh, you may have different spectral efficiencies because you have, because you have higher noise, okay, basically noise, interference, and then you may have lower data rates. So how do you place the density you use to place to, to deploy your network may impact on the shape of this curve, and of course, if it impacts on the shape, it impacts on the shape. Also, it impacts on the optimal point you are trying to uh, follow. Okay. Another aspect is the following: uh, when you consider advanced architectures like HetNet, like uh, like uh, uh, coordinated multipoint. What you have is the bandwidth which is available at each point and the power you can use are decided by something which is higher level than the physical one. So it may, they may impact on available bandwidth and the power rotation. Another effect is uh, if you consider the correlation among the q lengths, the user scheduling approach and the social location algorithms that you have in your network, uh, they impact on this kind of delay versus power turned off, and they also impact on the curve, and so they impact on the other. So the, the, the lesson learned is the following. How we deploy our network and how, how we operate our network may impact on the, this, on the shape of the curves that I showed you. Uh, of course, they impact on the Ottoman point, which is used to define, to design the most energy efficient uh, assessment. This is, uh, let's say, something which is very, very, very important. Um, okay, this is the theory, okay, the theoretical part. 
And if you want to go to practice, okay, of course, I don't want to go into detail because, again, I'm not a physical man, but just, I want just to give you an idea of the solutions that you can apply to, to be more energy efficient in the uh, radio assets part of the event. Uh, one thing you can do, uh, I mean, th this is not this is not a complete picture. I just wanted to give you some examples of, your, of what you can do. For instance, I didn't do uh, in the list, in list of uh, alternatives, uh, for instance, low SNR receivers, which is another technique to be more energy efficient. If you design a receiver which is able to receive at given data rate much uh, more SNR, of course, you can imagine that you can reduce the relative powder and this may have some impact on the energy consumption. So, uh, but let, let's talk about bandwidth spectrum. Of course, if you consider the operation of your network and uh, the idea is to expand your bandwidth in order to reduce the relative uh, power, of course, during the peak hours, you may not want you don't want to expand your uh, bandwidth because uh, since we have many users to serve, a lot of congestion, every health that you can use in your, in, in your spectrum is very, very, very precious. So you don't want to, to expect expansion during peak hours because you want to have higher spectral efficiencies, not for saving energy, but to provide a guaranteed user level to your uh, customer. But during off-peak hours, when everybody goes away, then you have few users. Few users, they have, you have the same bandwidth that you both during the auction. So why don't we save energy? In that case, when you have few users, you can enlarge your spectrum, so you can reduce your power. Okay. And uh, an example that is uh, coming from this. Uh, paper, you have that uh, at a given spectrum efficiency, which is 2.5 bit per second per Earth, if you increase your bandwidth by 44%, you have a saving in the transmitter power or of more than 70%. So it is it's effective. Of course, uh, the real numbers depend on the technology you use, but okay, that's something that is interesting. Uh, what are the issues here? Uh, first thing is the following. Uh, if we know, if we, if we know now that expanding the bandwidth is something which is helpful to, to uh, save energy, to increase the energy efficiency, why not do, save, do apply the same approach to time, jointly? So, if you introduce uh, in addition to uh, bandwidth expansion, also the possibility to have longer symbols of, uh, or let's say lower modulations, uh, and also put the transmission, uh, the transmitting devices in these big nodes, and if we play with these three things together, we can save even more energy. Okay, if you want to trade off, if you want to move to this side of trade off. Uh, the other issue is the following. Um, we have an overhead because to expand bandwidth, of course, as I mentioned, you uh, if you increase the bandwidth, you consume more power in terms of circuit power. Uh, you, here you have an even an additional way of consuming power, which is given by the overhead. I mean, if you want to use a large bandwidth, okay. Each user has to estimate okay, a large spectrum to do the equalization. So it means that each user must have uh, it's a higher number of pilots. Okay, must sustain, must investigate a higher number of pilots. So it means that you have this kind of additional overhead in terms of processing and. Uh, Sometimes you have also additional overhead in terms of uh, higher number of pilots, of uh, the training pilots in order to insert the system. So, uh, no free meals. 
Okay. Do you have a question on that? Oh, so based on what you say, that during the peak hour and off peak, we have to increase the bandwidth. If we increase the bandwidth for each that you assign to each user, maintain the same uh, data rate during off peak hours, you save energy because you can decrease the power at which you transmit. How about the peak time? I mean, we increase the bandwidth, more resources for the users. I mean, based on your uh, logic, we have to increase the bandwidth. No, 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 no. Uh, here I was saying the opposite. During peak hours, you, you, you cannot effort to increase bandwidth because you are more interested in better efficiency because you have to provide a, a minimum level to each user. So I don't care about spending more energy because I have to provide a service uh, for which I had an agreement with my user. So I don't, I, I, don't, I cannot do this trick. Why? When I have uh, off-peak hours, so nobody's around, so the congestion is not my problem. So uh, I can afford to use less efficient, less efficiently the spectrum in order to be more efficient in terms of energy. That's the trade-off. Yeah. So I'm confused. So during the peak hours. If we increase the bandwidth and off peak hours, peak hours. Okay, peak hours. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we, we don't care about energy consumption. We care about the yeah. quality of service. Yes. So if I increase the bandwidth, so I can load much much data. Ah uh, no, that's that, that's uh, probably something that I, uh, I said that was misleading. The overall bandwidth that you have uh, is limited because it is what you both from the spectrum action. Ocean, which is the spectrum assigned to the network running by, run by the operators. What I'm referring to, to is the bandwidth assigned to each specific user. So I can play on it. So I can serve the user with a given data rate with a given bandwidth. And if, if I want to save energy, I can serve the same user with larger bandwidth so I can allocate less power to that user. That's, that's the overall picture. Yeah, maybe it was my fault because I didn't mention it. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Next week. Um, still in the improving radio access part, I have this. It's the alternative for you, which is inter cell interface management. Here, the point is uh, since we know that interference plays a big role in defining data it we can achieve, the point is that uh, why, don't, uh, why don't we be smart in the limiting the interference? Of course, one trivial solution could be okay, if we want to. Uh, uh, reduce the interference, you want to uh, avoid interference, okay, you transmit on a given bandwidth, you transmit on another bandwidth, they are not overlapping, so you do not have interference. Or you transmit from uh, 1 pm to 2 pm, you transmit from 2 pm to 3 pm, so you do not have interference. Of course, this is a, so a two trivial way of dealing with interference, and the, the studies shown that what we have is uh, not a good result in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, how smart you can use the spectrum. You can, you can get uh, the same energy efficiency uh, with higher spectrum efficiency. Okay? Because if you split the spectrum, uh, let's say, uh, in a fixed way, you get, of course, uh, uh, no interference, but you are underutilizing under your spectrum. So we have to be smart in doing that. And of course more flexible, more dynamic. Uh, for instance, one thing you can do is to do interference removal. So according to your uh, let's say main interferers, which are around you, you can uh, decode their signal okay, and uh, remove it from the interference. So you can polish your received uh, signal. 
that's one way of dealing with it. So we don't you don't split uh, in a static way this pattern, but you are in the okay? It's a benign fashion. Another thing you can do is to play with scheduling a bit forming so you can have uh, uh, the stations that are synchronized, they serve the right user at the right time and you know, try to use directional beams in order to reduce the interference to not intend or zero. So, so you, if you play with it, you, again, you, you don't have uh, static things, you have a dynamic thing that can play with uh, uh, let's say, the, 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 the best uh, opportunities in your network. Another thing you can have is joint transmission. So you can have that base uh, uh, stations so synchronized to uh, basically at symbol level. They want to uh, let's say they, 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 they want to transmit something which when it is received uh, in a synchronous way basically improve your SNI SIR. Or another thing is kind of uh, it's similar but uh, it requires uh, less stringent uh, uh, synchroniza synchronization among the station, which is ABSF agreement. So it, is, it stands for almost bank, almost bank, almost bank subframe agreement. It is a technique which is used in LTE. So well, here we have that the base stations which are neighbor between. In the reciprocal neighborhood, they agree on which time use to share among them, say time and also frequency, so that they can, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, but for instance, uh, if you have that uh, a mobile terminal uh, can receive the interference from a, another base station, uh, you may want to schedule uh, this terminal in a time slot in, the, in a frequency uh, domain which is not uh, used in that time in that frequency by the interfering base station. So if you do the opposite, you can schedule, uh, let's say, uh, critical mobile stations for the two base stations. And uh, in this, for instance, in this time slot for the other base station, you don't serve user, but you just transmit pilot. That's why I'm saying it is saying almost plan because it doesn't something but it's a very low spectrum occupation. These are the types of thing, things that you can do uh, in terms of inter 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 uh, interference reduction. Um, okay. Uh, again, here you have we have two final issues. Uh, the first is that. Nice, there are nice techniques uh, that they can give you good results in terms of, in terms of interface cancellations, but we have to yeah, pay attention to this. Uh, in order to enable these skills, uh, the base stations must coordinate. And coordination means uh, exchange of information. And you have exchanging information to get synchronized may require energy and also may require capacity okay, between the intended um, uh, players of the synchronization. And since it requires bit per second to be exchanged and you don't want to exchange this information over the wires because the wire resource is precious and you want to give it to the users, you exchange this information through the wire network uh, doing that, uh, you have to take care and pay attention of the capacity of the recording, so the network that uh, feeds your access nodes, and also the delay. Because, for instance, to do joint transmission, you have to be synchronized at a single level, and if you have a delay uh, to, to go from one station to another, uh, it may be difficult in the end to get in such a good uh, synchronization level uh, in order to have a proper exploitation of this. So, there are also these drawbacks. Okay, and the last thing that I wanted to show you is the following. Following. Um, again, 
another solution you can apply to be more energy efficient is to play with other antennas and distributed antenna systems. Uh, here the, uh, the, 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 the rational is I have given bandwidth, uh, I want to spend a given power, and uh, I want to design a system that uh, allows me to transmit at higher bit rates uh, without changing bandwidth and power. Of course, this is the field of physical layer man, and so since we, we already have this lecture, because I can have this, I prefer to do it in order to have this. Much better uh, with the work that I could do now. I will skip it. Okay, um, this basically concludes uh, the overview of what you can do at SS network level. Now, uh, what time is it? Okay, we have five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, um, uh, we move to the second. Uh, second uh, type of actions you can do since it's very short, it's a couple of slides, and then we will really, uh, after the break, we will continue with the third type of uh, solution you can have, which is uh, this. So, here uh, the point is the following. Okay, uh, we have seen how we can improve the energy efficiency of the ASO, or the radio part of the network. Uh, what happens if we want to be energy efficiency also in the way we deploy our network? So now we okay, we place our destinations. Uh, the point here is the following. If you want to save energy, of course, we, we want to uh, deploy few base stations because if you have few base stations, you have uh, few few uh, device to provide uh, and, uh, and to provide energy. With. And of course, when you have these few devices installed, uh, you have that. Uh, the, the devices are far from the users they have to serve. So it means that uh, you have high automation, so you have to transmit at high power. So one idea to improve the energy efficiency from the uh, installation point of, view, point of view is, okay, since we want to decrease the power that we use to serve the user, to serve the user let's put the base stations close to the users. Okay, bring the base station close. It means that you have less attenuation, so you can transmit the lower power. For instance, uh, to give you an idea, if you move from a range which is one kilometer to one fourth of it, to under fifty meter, you have that. Uh, if you consider just the relative power, you go from having 0.11 megabit per joule to something which is uh, close to two megabit per joule. So you have a lot of improvement if you move closer to your base stations. Of course, as we, you may have learned, is uh, you have that uh, if you have something, if you gain from one side, we have to lose from the other side. And what we use is the following. Uh, if you bring up base stations close to the user, you have that uh, you have to install more base stations. And if you store more base station, you have to pay the cost and energy consumption that you have in the base station, which is, for instance, given by the cooling system. Okay, so you save from the rate power point of view, but you spend more in terms of supply damage. There is also another problem, which is capex. If you increase the number of base station, you have to invest more money, and maybe not possible or you okay, can save energy but uh, you can have uh, higher uh, costs to buy your uh, stuff. And the final thing is what now 
machine is even more important in terms of optimization. Uh, you basically are, if you deploy it, if you, if you deploy your network as it is, you basically are trying to optimize a fixed deployment, which is starting and doesn't change with, with time, uh, over a network, uh, basically over a traffic condition which is changing over time. So, so at some point in, of your daily operation of your network, you will have that uh, what we have optimized is not what we have in reality, and so you have some uh, time periods during the day where your network is not working at the best and as efficient point. So this is a kind of a source of uh, energy inefficiency. So okay, it's nice, but maybe you can do better. And what we can do better, uh, we can see it after the break. There are questions for the... Uh, you have questions in this part? I'm going to quick. I'm too quick. I don't know. I have to slow down. I don't know. I'm going to slow. I have to speed up. I don't know. Is it fine? It's fine. Thank you.